Today we are going to go over Laravel gates. So first, let's open up our terminal and let's go in to our Vagrant machine, aka our Homestead machine. Uh, again, I mentioned this before, I do have an entire video on this. Um, so feel free to check out my Laravel installer and Homestead video. Once we're in there, let's go to Tinker. And all we're going to do is we're going to get the first user. And we want to get the user email so we can log in to our given uh, application. Next, if you remember from our last tutorial, our user factory, which we used in our database seeder, automatically sets the default password to this hash, which actually sets the password to password. So here's our email, this is our password, and we're going to use this user to log in. So we'll use that email address and password and tell it to remember us. Next, we're gonna to go to our posts endpoint, where we are outputting every single post, all 100 posts, 10 posts for each user. So what if we just wanted to output the posts for this given user, or not all dash or whatever that name is? Well, here's what we would do. First, we would, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit for you guys. We would want to go to our providers, our app providers, and go to our auth service provider. In our auth service provider, we are using this gate facade. Now, gate allows us to define actions that are authorizable for a given user. So we're gonna say view post, just like that. And this is going to accept a callback function and the first parameter is going to be the user and the second is going to be the post. And all we're gonna say is post belongs to user equals user ID equals post user ID. And then we're gonna return the post belongs to user. So all the gate does is it determines if we want to view the post, if we give the user the capability to view the given post. So it's gonna return a Boolean. Based on the user and based on the given post or the model post, you wanna return a Boolean. And so we're saying, okay, if the post belongs to the user, return true, otherwise return false. And we said in that variable, we'll make it a little prettier, but we can just return user ID equals post user ID. So the user can view the post when the user ID equals the given posts user ID. So right now it will currently not do anything. So if we reload this page, we still see a hundred different posts, not what we want. So how do we actually use a gate? We defined a gate, but we're not using a gate. So to use a gate, we want to actually go to our index.blade.php. So resources slash views slash post. I'll actually use the sidebar. Resources slash views slash post slash index.php. And all we want to do is we want to say, okay, for each posts as post, we can use this blade directive called can and then we're going to say view post because we defined our gate as the view post ability. This is actually the ability parameter. So can the given user do this ability? Can the given user view the post? And then we need to actually pass in the post. Then we have to end the can, the can, end can, just like that. So now, the given user can view the post based off the view post gate ability. We define the view post gate ability here, just like that. And so for each post, we are checking if the given user can view the post and they can only view the post if it is their post. Let's go back here and let's reload our page, just like that. And now we only have 10 posts. This is the title section, then we have one, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten posts. And of course, if we were to go back to Tinker right in here, which we still have open, and we did okay, we did app slash user first. That's the user we logged in with. And we're just going to get the posts. We're going to say, okay, well, the first one is Mr. And here's the content of our first post. So let's just see if that lines up. Just like that. And it is. So that's our first post. And then our last post is Miss Ot Et Ut Sapian Kate, whatever. And of course, if we went down to our 10th post for that given user, it is Ot Et Ut Sapiente. So that's how you define a gate and use it within your blade template. So right here in our auth service provider, the gate is just defining the ability to view the post. And when the user ID equals the post user ID, it returns true. So when the user can view the post, according to the gate definition, it'll show the post. But what if we wanted to invert that? We could say, okay, when the user can not view the post, when it is not the current users, the authenticated users post, then show the post. So now we'll show 90 posts that do not belong to the user. So let's just go down here. And once we reload that page, we have one, two, obviously a lot more than 10 this time. And that will be 90. So that is cannot. So can is when the user can or when the defined gate ability is true. Cannot is when the user cannot view or when the defined gate ability is false. Another really cool thing we can do is we can do, okay, we're defining that gate there. So let's do gate and we're going to do after. And we're going to do function. And we're going to do user. And this will hook into all of the after, uh, into the hook after the given gates are run. And we can just say, okay, if user is, and we don't have this set up, but just for the sake of example, if user admin, if user is super admin, then return true. And we'll do this. We'll do return is super admin. And we'll just say, okay, if the current user is super admin, always return true. Then we need to go to our user model. And we'll just add a public function is super admin. And we'll return true from that. So this gate will always return true. So even if we go back to our index.blade and we have cannot view post, well, it's only going to show the, oh no, it's actually going to show all 100, my bad. And it will show all 100. So by saying, okay, gate after, we're hooking into the user after all the gates are ran and we're overriding the default view post gate ability and we're saying okay after all the gates are run we want to hook in and we want to say yeah that ability is true for most users but if it's a super admin they can see everything so to give you an idea we can go back here and we say can view post can view post right right then we can say okay let's do that Whoop. php engine and for each, what I do? Oh, and can, my bad guys. And can. And then we just have those 10 again. But if we went back to our auth service provider and we said, okay, is not user super admin returned false, then we still have our 10. So that works exactly how we would expect it to work. So if the user ID is the post user ID, return is super admin. Now, if we were to hook into the gate before hook, then access the user and say, okay, return user is super admin. Check this out. And these hooks, the order of the hooks do matter. 
Then we reload our page. Now we get every single, every single hook. So now we're saying, okay, if the user can view the post or can't view the post, it doesn't matter. As long as we have the super admin user, they can view every single post. And the user is a super admin because we added this function and we hard coded it in. Normally you would determine this based off of rules and permissions and setting up a table, actually four tables for that, which we will go into later in this tutorial series. Um, there's several other things you can do with the gates. Uh, for example, you can do gate allows um, and then gate denies and that will just accept a user. Um, you can do gate for user and then say, okay, user, uh, I don't know, find or where email equals example at email.com. And then you can do allows and then the ability, etc., etc. So there's several other things you can do. Um, you can also define several abilities. And in your index.blade, you can do at can any, and then you can pass in an array of abilities. And you can say view post, edit post, delete post, et cetera, et cetera. And then of course do end can any. Um, and you can do a whole bunch of other things with gates. I'm not gonna get too much into those until the next lesson uh, because those examples will be a lot better suited once we get into policies. The biggest takeaway I want to pass along about gates right now is that gates are like the routes and what we'll be able to do is when we get into Laravel policies our next video we'll be able to say gate define and then we'll do view post and then we'll be able to say okay post policy at and then view and so in a lot of ways the gate facade is a lot like the route facade and our policy, um, which you can scaffold using PHP artists, will be a lot like controllers. So gates are to routes and policies are to controllers in a lot of ways. There are some differences and we will get into those. Um, and the coolest thing I think about these is about Laravel gates is that they are transferable into blade templates automatically and allow us to really set up some cool, easily scaffolded abilities. I like setting up policies and policies are, as you can see up here and our auth service provider are based on a given model. So for each model, I'll create a policy and then I'll create a gate to map to each policy callback, just like you'll create a route to map to each controller callback or HTTP verb. So guys, that is all I have on gates today. We will get a little deeper into gates and on Laravel policies in the next lesson. Thanks again. This is Zachary Horn with Clean Code Studio. Clean code, clean life. If this was useful, helpful, like and subscribe, and I will keep them coming. Simple.